everybody, this is Lucy for News. I am Chi Min and this is Chi Min. We are reporting the top five news of 2019. The first story we have is the protest in Hong Kong. The protest in Hong Kong, which is still happening presently, started on the 9th of June 2019. Their main purpose was to speak against the extradition bill, which is a bill that was made in April. This bill lets criminals, the suspects of crimes, to be extradited to mainland China for trials. Being extradited means the suspect is handed over to a foreign state for trials. The protesters thought this would make things unfair for people of, for the people of Hong Kong and that China would be taking over more of Hong Kong. Unfortunately, the protests have been becoming violent after the attack of the trial, which will be explained later, and also because of the hatred protesters have for the brutal police. On the 15th day of June, Karen Lam, the leader of Hong Kong, announced to re delay the bill, but the demonstrators wanted the government to withdraw it. They also started to demand Lam to step down. On June 21st, they started to demand for arrested protesters to be released. On the 1st of July, the anniversary of Hong Kong becoming China, protesters demonstrated, spraying graffiti on walls. On July 21st, Men in white shirts and masks attacked the protesters at an underground station. These men were proven to be triads, a gang in China apparently hired by the Chinese government. The police were slow at stopping these men, and witnesses say the police ignored the cries for help. By the time it was August, protests had become very violent, and protesters started wearing protective gears. On the 6th of August, mainland China gave one of the strongest warnings to Hong Kong. On August 11th, a protester had her eye hurt, and eye patches became the symbol of the protest. The Hong Kong police, who were on the side of mainland China but are Hong Kongers, admitted disguising officers as, protest as protesters to catch, quote, extreme violent rioters. This led to targeted attacks of suspected disguised officers by the protesters. At last, on September 4th, the extradition bill was cancelled, but the protesters said it was, quote, too little too late. What the protesters want now is the following. First, to cancel the enraging description of the July 21st protests. Second, to release all arrested protesters. And third, to independently investigate the cruelty of the police. Fourth, to let them elect Hong Kong's chief executive and legislative council. On November 11th, a demonstrator was shot by the police and a pro-China supporter was set on fire by the protesters after an argument. The soldiers in Hong Kong, who are Chinese, aren't involved in this protest except for cleaning up the roads. The second story is about North Korea's second summit. On January 8th, 18, 2019, the High House announced that the leaders from the U.S. and North Korea are going to meet for the second summit in February. In February, President Trump announced that the Trump summit will take place in February 27 to February 28 in Vietnam. Trump and Kim had had bad relationships before. Trump re referred Kim as Rocket Man at the NATO summit in the UK. He later called him Little Rocket Man and a Mad Man, while Kim called him Mentally Deranged Daughter. Daughter means a person whose mental abilities are impaired or a person whose understanding is impaired because of old age, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. In other words, they had a war of words. On the first day of the summit, Trump and Kim started a one-on-one -on -one meeting, starting with a headshake. The meeting was held for 30 minutes. On the second day, Kim was asked if he would consider opening a U.S. liaison office in Pyongyang. When Trump prompted him for an answer, Kim answered that the idea was welcomable. Kim was asked if he was willing to shut down his nuclear program. He answered, quote, if I'm not willing to do that, I wouldn't be here right now. But on that the, on the day, the White House announced that the summit suddenly ended, and um, although they said this, they didn't say why the schedule was changed. The, there was no agreement reached, and pe which is disappointing since many people are hoping for an agreement. We got the news from the information from BBC. The third story we have is about the Fukushima radiation and the upcoming 2010 Olympics. On March 11, 2011, 
after a large earthquake, the cooling system of the nuclear power plant in Fukushima failed, causing it to melt. This happened because the, with the cooler snap activating, the materials overheated and eventually led to several explosions. In this disaster, 32 million people were affected, and it is a level 7 nuclear accident would like the Chernobyl disaster, meaning it's the highest level on the International Nuclear and Radiological Event scale or the INES. This event led to high levels of radiation release. Now the Japanese government says that it, the radiation is quote long gone, but it really isn't according to some news companies. There are monitoring posts in some in Fukushima that measure the levels of radiation, which says the area has about the same radiation levels as places like New York. Unfortunately, that's not the whole story, according to the diplomat. In places like New York, most of the levels of background radiation, which are mostly rays, that which does far less damage the radionuclides, which take up most of the radiation in Fukushima. Radionuclides are dust-like particles that stick and could get into your body and stay. Also, monitor posts only measure gamma rays, which many radionuclides don't release. According to the Scientific American, some places have measurements of radiation as five millis of worse, five times the level Japan recommended before the accident. In some spots, the level, the measurement is over 20 millis of worse. The maximum exposure by international experts and this is critical since high amounts of radiation can cause illnesses like cancer. According to the Washington Post, there is, a, there is groundwater seeping into the broken reactors, showing that the whole situation is not under control. Also, according to Greenpeace, radiation levels may be too high for people to live even after the 21st century in some places. But the Japanese government insists it's safe. It's planning to host certain sport competitions of the Olympics in Fukushima City, a plan only months away from when we put this today's show. They are also planning to end all evacuation by 2020. All the information is from 2019. The first story is the US and Korea's military costs. President Trump is demanding that South Korea pay roughly 400% more money for the cost of the US for keeping U.S. forces, which is about $5 billion. The price hike deeply concerned lawmakers and angered Seoul. Korean leaders are questioning the U.S. about their alliance and are also wondering if whether Trump will withdraw U.S. troops if they don't pay the huge amount of money. Scott Snyder, the director of the U.S.-Korea policy program at the Council of Foreign Relations, said the price hike creates worry that Trump is doing this before withdrawing the troops. In Korea, Trump suggested withdrawing the troops and Korean officials accused him for threatening them. Some critics say Trump raised the cost so that the Koreans will not pay and so that he could withdraw the troops. Scott Snyder said the main side effect is that it raises questions about the credibility of the U.S. as a protector and an ally, which is a bad for relationships. Many countries will see this and think that they the U.S. might not help them too and look for other allies. They don't want to have an uncertain ally like the U.S. is right now to Korea. Experts say they have no idea where the president got the number from and suggest Trump's suggestions are out of nowhere. Many officials are also expressing their discomfort about the issue. The Koreans want to take over the security of Korea. Some U.S. officials say this is their chance right now. They face or their opportunity to take over. Koreans also say that the U.S. is also here helping them just because of their own good. They say the U.S. is only helping them to keep an eye on China and Russia its two biggest enemies. If Trump wins the 2020 election, experts say that he will withdraw the troops from South Korea. We got the information from CNN. The fifth story is about Brexit. The European Union, also known as EU, is an economic and political union that is made up with 28 European countries. Brexit refers to the United Kingdom leaving the EU. 52% of the population voted for leave. Brexit was supposed to happen in March 2019. Under present Prime Minister May, who was the last leader of UK, the deadline was moved twice. The EU agreed for a third extension until January 31st. 
The parliament rejected Mrs. May's Brexit bills, which leads to her examination. Mr. Johnson, the current prime minister or leader, renegotiated part of the existing deal. However, the parliament rejected the deal again, which also means Mr. Johnson has to ask the EU for another delay. If the EU leaves the if the UK leaves the EU without a deal, it becomes a no deal Brexit. It, if this happens, there could be delays at ports and price and availability of some foods can be affected. And there are possibilities of shortage of some medicine. Many economists and business groups believe that no deal Brexit will lead to an economic car. We got the information from CBS. This ends our news. Thank you for watching. This was Jamin and Chapin, and have a great Christmas.